10 minutes of useless information about Fallout New Vegas. There's an unused Wild Wasteland encounter found in the Old World Blues DLC files, where the player would have stumbled upon a graffiti saying, oh yeah, in stylized red letters, a direct reference to Kool-Aid Man and his famous catchphrase, oh yeah. During the side quest How Little We Know, if you choose to try to break up the Omerita's plan to aid Caesar and assault the Strip, you'll have to get rid of Glandon, either by convincing him to just leave or by killing him. But there's actually a third hidden option to report his crimes to Marie Pappas, the head officer of the NCR military police. But because of a bug, this option doesn't always work. To report him, you would have to get Glandon's snuff tapes from his wall safe, then go to Kachino and confirm that the voice on the snuff tapes is his. Yeah, this is Clandon. After that's done, you would have to go to the NCR military police headquarters and report the crime. Murder? What kind of murder? Do you have any proof? These are terrifying. Do you have any idea who the man is speaking on this tape? Clandon? Okay. I'll send some troops over there to bring him in. Sometime later, four NCR military police soldiers will enter Gamora and arrest Clandon. Clandon, under the authority of the New California Republic, I place you under arrest for murder. What? Are you f***ing kidding me? You can't do this. The Omeritas aren't going to stand by and let you arrest me. The Omeritas have no say in this matter. This is a legal matter now. You'll have to come with us. They will escort him all the way back to the police headquarters and place him into a jail cell. Kachino will also comment on the troopers arresting him. Yeah, we saw the troopers come through. I can't imagine things are gonna work out well for him. Did you know that Benny is modeled after a real-world American mobster, Bugsy Siegel, who was a driving force behind the development of the Las Vegas Strip and is often thought of as the father of modern-day Vegas. Bugsy's trademark checkered suit also looks almost identical to the one Benny wears. In the Mojave Wasteland, you can find a couple of references to Fallout 3, like the Wasteland Survival Guide, that you can help Mora write in Megaton. According to Joshua Sawyer, the Survival Guide was intentionally added to New Vegas to show the wider influence of the Lone Wanderer on the rest of the Fallout world. Greener Pastures Disposal Site, one of the largest radioactive areas in the Capital Wasteland, is referenced in one of the terminals in the Dead Money's DLC. It reads, As shoddy as the support beams are for most of these buildings, the ventilation system's worse, and the problems they had over at Puesta, sure, when you count our bonuses, it's good, but not when the workers are coughing to death. Hate to see what this place spits out if someone let the ventilation system chug along for a few years. We'd have another Greener Pastures on our hand. Easy and a pile of bodies beyond it. Eddie has a Roosevelt Academy bumper sticker on him, a place you can also visit in Fallout 3. During the main quest in the Lonesome Road DLC, Eddie also plays multiple recordings mentioning Colonel Autumn and the Adams Air Force Base. Oh, Whitley, there you are. Orders from Colonel Autumn. He feels the iBot Duraframe project isn't advancing quickly enough. There's a picture of the Tenpenny Tower in the Topps Casino and a picture of James and Catherine, the Lone Wanderer's parents, in the Vault 21 Hotel. Written on a pillar in a wine cellar in the Dead Money's DLC is, I am not your mommy, if you have the Wild Wasteland perk. A reference to the Doctor Who series, where in the two-part episode, the empty child and the doctor dances. A zombie-like creature with a gas mask face asks everyone, Are you my mommy? There are a couple of interesting armor pieces and clothing that got left unused, like the Repcon jumpsuit that was supposed to be found somewhere in Novak, a cut helmet for the Scorched Sierra Power Armor that has all its assets included in the game files but was simply left unused, an armored Vault 21 jumpsuit that can actually be seen in the ending slides of the game worn by the Courier, a Powder Ganger armor mask that appears as a white shirt fashioned into a homemade balaclava mask, a cut Vault Vault 24 jumpsuit and the Enclave Shock Trooper armor, most likely a leftover from Fallout 3. When confronted by Brotherhood of Steel members outside the bunker during the quest I could make you care, if you have the terrifying presence perk you can threaten to cast down their codex. After the Brotherhood members run off, Veronica would ask if you were joking about the codex. Uh, you were kidding just now when you said that thing about the codex, right? 
A subtle nod to her voice actress Felicia Day, whose character in the Guild web series is named Codex. Another nod to her is found in Veronica's inventory when she sometimes carries a spork, referencing the musical Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog, and her character Penny, who often uses a spork to eat frozen yogurt. The Old World Blues DLC was meant to have two unique rifles, called the Scorpion Rifle and the Spider Rifle. The Scorpion Rifle would have fired miniature blue robo-scorpions that you could have used as your personal little army to destroy your enemies. And the Spider Rifle would have fired spider drones from the Fallout 3's DLC Operation Anchorage. If you have a wild child reputation on the strip, Mr. Holdout will give you a discount on his merchandise and will have some unique dialogue. It's an honor to have my wares used by such a wild badass. Cuts on the house, friend. Roy, Wayne, and Ferris are three recovering victims found in the old Mormon fort. Putting their names together will reveal a reference to a famous pro wrestler, Roy Wayne Ferris, who used to dress up as an Elvis impersonator. In the beginning of the Honest Hearts DLC, there are some unused scenes and dialogue between Ricky and Stella after the Happy Trails Caravan Company would have arrived in Zion. If the player sold Ricky some extra psycho before making the trip, this particular scene would play out. Oh man, yeah, Trigger Finger is feeling itchy. Come on, assholes, show yourselves, and Dead Eye Ricky will blow your f***ing heads off. Shut your mouth, you goddamn junkie. Or I'll plant one between your shoulder blades, I swear. Don't worry, Stella. Old Ricky won't be running out of Psycho anytime soon. Old Ricky's downright flush. Yes, indeed. Sounds like you got enough for a fatal overdose, then. Do us all a favor, will you? Dream on, Stella. Ricky ain't about to die for nobody. Ricky's f***ing invincible. Yes, sir. <laughs> God damn it, never should have joined this ass-backwards caravan. But if the player didn't sell Ricky anything, he would start going through a psycho withdrawal. I ain't feeling good, man. I feel like shit. I got the shakes, got the sweats. Enough! Another word of your bitching and I'll put you out of your misery myself. <sighs> you don't know how this feels, Stella. I'm sick. Never been so sick my whole life. You ain't sick. You're a goddamn junkie, that's what you are, so shut it. You ain't got no heart, Stella. I swear, you're a monster, and you're gonna regret treating me like this. Didn't nobody do this to you but yourself, Junkie. Now try suffering in silence for once. That gun is a unique 5.56mm pistol found inside the Dino Bike gift shop in Novak, and is modeled after the pistol used by Rick Deckard in the 1982 movie Blade Runner. A one-star challenge can also be completed by using this gun, where you have to destroy 15 robots with it, called Benefit or a Hazard. A further reference to the movie, where when meeting with Rachel, Rick Deckard says, Replicants are like any other machine. They're either a benefit or a hazard. A pair of unused message files showed that it was once possible to disguise yourself as a boomer or a member of the followers of the apocalypse. The boomer disguise would have been useful for infiltrating Nellis Air Force Base, and the followers disguise would have made the Legion docile. Similarly, there is an unused script indicating that Fiend armor was planned to function like regular faction armor, allowing the player to engage in dialogue with some of the Fiend leaders outside Vault 3. In Cannibal Johnson's cave, we can find a unique consumable item called Mole Rat Wonder Meat, created by Ryan Brigg, a wasteland scientist pretending to be a raider located in the Jury Street metro station in Fallout 3. Using his meat box, the lone wanderer was able to craft his own supply of wonder meat. Sadly, this machine never appears in Fallout New Vegas, and only one singular piece can ever be found in the entire game. In the Matthews Animal Husbandry Farm, four scattered diary pages detail the horrible end of the last human inhabitant of the farm, a lone child. According to the diary pages, the child's parents went to Camp Searchlight to get supplies. Days passed and the parents did not return. The child went into the camp to search for them and found they had become feral ghouls. They attacked him on sight, so he had to shoot them dead in self-defense and returned alone to the farm. Traumatized, 
the child became increasingly paranoid, accusing the farm animals of a violent conspiracy to take over the farm. In a last maniacal attempt to stop the animals, the child burned the farmhouse to the ground while still inside. His skeletal remains can be found within the farmhouse ruins.